Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. Welcome if you are new here and welcome if you're a returning viewer. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you will stick around and I hope you will subscribe. My camera looks all a bit wonky today. I don't know. There we go. Does that look straighter? I don't know. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, today's going to be a project vlog. It's going to be a slightly different project vlog from normal because I'm not knitting my project and it's a fairly small project. We are at the start of a bank holiday weekend here in the UK or at least in England and Wales. I'm not sure that Scotland has a bank holiday weekend this weekend but in England we do. So um, it is sunny outside. I don't think it's like super hot today. Uh, according to the weather forecast, it's going to be about 1920, I think. So I'm hoping it'll be warm enough to sit out in the garden for a bit this afternoon. We haven't put our garden furniture out yet, but I'm hoping Simon will put it out later. So I'm hoping it might be warm enough to sit out there. Our garden isn't like very sheltered or anything, so um, if it's windy, it can be a bit chilly out there. But that's my plan for this weekend. I've done a bit of work this morning. It is now nearly 11 o'clock on the Saturday morning, so we've got three-day weekend. And uh, we're planning to have a fairly quiet weekend at home. We've only just come back from holiday two days ago. And then I was teaching yesterday, so I'm a bit tired. And I've tied up some loose ends from my workshop this morning and done some admin. And then I just want to relax for the rest of the weekend. I do have some projects I'm working on, which I should be knitting on. And I also have to knit some swatches for a new design submission, uh, which I need to finish by Sunday evening, really. So I can't knit on this project all weekend um, and I also really should be working on some new workshop projects but I'm a bit tired, I'm a bit lacking inspiration at the moment so I thought I was looking for something else the other day and I found this and I thought right let's go for it. So um, there is a very well known Danish knitter called Petite Knit. Now there is somebody else called Petite Knitter who lives in Alaska or somewhere up there. Um, and there is Petite Knit, who's Danish. I'll put her website below. And around Christmas time, I saw this pattern that she had called the Teddy Clutch. And she also has one called the Winter Clutch. And I'll talk more about the patterns in a minute. But she sells these kits. Hang on, let me just get this out. She sells these frames for these uh, clutches on her website. She's based in Denmark. And uh, if I order it from the UK, I would probably have to pay customs charges and I was just about to go to Norway in Jan end of January and um, so I decided to order it and have it delivered to my parents place in Norway because then I wouldn't have to pay customs charges so I wasn't sure which size I wanted to knit so I got the big frame so she sells these frames which are for the top of the bag I bought the big frame and the small frame uh, because I wasn't sure which bag I want to make she also sells the lining so I bought the big lining and the small lining. So the lining is still in the bag. And I think the lining is like already sewn. Apologies for the rustling. Let me take this out. So the lining is already sewn. Like that. So I guess this is a small one. And then I guess you just stitch it into the top of the knitting. We'll see. So I bought that. Had it sent to my parents. Came home. Got too busy with other stuff and I haven't thought about it. Got a new drawer unit from my office a few weeks ago, put it in there and kind of forgot about it. And then I was looking in that drawer unit for something else the other day and I found that parcel and I thought um, maybe I will need to make this soon. And my plan was always to film a video of me making it. So I thought as it's a long weekend and I'm feeling a bit tired. And apart from doing these swatches, which I have to do this weekend, I don't really feel like doing an awful lot of other stuff. And because it's a long weekend and next week is half term school holidays here in the UK or at least in England, I think. Um, it's going to be really busy. We live in Cornwall and it's a very popular tourist area. And with the weather good, long weekend, school holidays, it's going to be really busy. We do have to go out somewhere and walk the dog. So we'll probably drive off somewhere and walk the dog, but probably later in the afternoon if it's warm today. And we also will need to do that tomorrow on Monday. 
It may go out a little bit one of the days, but it's usually really busy everywhere you go. <laughs> like long weekend in the summer and school holidays and you just end up sitting in traffic and it just ends up being packed everywhere. So we don't tend to do a lot, uh, especially as neither the girls are home this weekend. One of my daughters is coming home, but I'm not sure whether she's coming home on Sunday or Monday. So we may go out a little bit on Monday if she comes home on Sunday. I don't know. But anyway, let me talk about these patterns. So there are two patterns that are purchased. One is called the Winter Clutch. And that looks like that. And that fits the small frame, I think. Yes. Uh, it's 20 centimeters length. Depth is 12 centimeters. Height is 15 centimeters. Um, and then there is the Teddy Clutch, which comes in a large and a small. And the large, small one is the same as the winter clutch. Yes, 20 by 12 by 15. The large one is 28 by 11 by 20. So I'm going to knit the small one. I ordered the yarn for the teddy clutch. I struggled to find, I couldn't find the yarn she uses, which is called Teddy Deer by Jeopard Gun, which I don't, never heard of. And I tried to find it, but I couldn't find it. But I found this. This is Drops Boucle, a pack of Boucle. Um, I don't know. I think it is a similar meterage to the pattern. Let's have a look. So the pattern she uses is 50 grams, 75 meters. This is 50 grams and 140 meters. So this is, I think that's why I was thinking I will have to hold two double. Now I got two of each. I don't know whether I'm going to hold these two double or hold them. I think I'm going to hold these two double. Rather than holding two of that double and two of that double and stripe it or whatever. I think I'm going to hold this double. But what I need to do first is uh, find some needles. I need uh, two and a half millimeter needles. Okay. So it's quite thick yarn and quite thin needles. Okay. So I'm going to go find some needles. I'm going to knit a swatch. And we'll take it from there. Um, I'll come back and let you know how I get on with this over this weekend. And see if I can finish this in a weekend. That's a picture of the large teddy clutch. I love the large one, but I thought if I knit the small one, then I can decide later, later whether I want to do the big one or not. I just thought the small one is a bit more doable in a weekend and probably something I will use more. So I'll go and get my needle set, knit a swatch, and I'll come back and tell you how I get on. <music> It is Saturday lunchtime. Um, I went downstairs and I knitted a swatch. And I haven't actually cast it off because I may need this yarn, so I haven't cast it off. But I knitted a swatch. I misread the pattern to start with. I thought the tension was 20 stitches. I think it's 16 stitches. I thought it was 20. So I originally cast on more stitches than I needed. And then when I realised it was 20 stitches I decreased a few because I was worried about the amount of yarn I had um so I didn't want to knit a swatch that was way too big now you can see with this yarn there is no way you can count the stitches and rows on this it completely obscures the stitch definition um which is I guess what the what the yarn was chosen this is not the yarn that's in the pattern I think I mentioned that earlier but I guess that's why a boucle yarn was uh, chosen so what I've done, because obviously I can't count the number of stitches and the number of rows. If I normally did a swatch in the stocking stitch pattern, I would just knit it and then I would count, lay my ruler out on it and I'd just count stitches and rows and that would be it. Can't do that with this one, obviously, because you can't see any. So what I did was I cast on a few more stitches than the number of stitches per 10 centimetres, which I thought was... 
20. Um, don't know why I thought it was 20, but I did. So I cast on, I think, 28. So I had like four stitches each side. But then when I realised it was only 16, let me double check. Yeah, so the tension is 16 stitches in 23 rows. Um, I decreased a few. So what I did was I did a few rows, three rows in garter stitch, a couple of rows in stocking stitch. Then I put this marker in here. And then I knitted about 10 rows. Then I put a marker in each side, each side of the center 16 stitches. And that's when I realized that it was 16, not 20. So I put a marker each side of the like center 20 stitches. And then I carried on knitting, but I'd done 23 rows from this bottom marker. And I counted that using a row counter. And then I put a marker in up here. Up here. And I must admit, I haven't really like blocked it or pressed it or anything because I mean it's a bag I don't think it's going to need blocking or pressing I quickly um, measured it using a tape measure but I actually prefer to measure it using um, a ruler and I'm just going to quickly measure it so what I'm doing is I'm measuring between the this isn't going to be very accurate but I basically just measure it and I can't do that so I basically just measure it between these markers and that measures 10 centimeters and about 10.2 centimeters. So I think that's close enough. Um, I'm not gonna bother going down a needle size. We're up a needle size? No, down a needle size. To get it to 10 centimeters, I think I'll be fine. And then I measured the um, rows. And the rows are supposed to be 10, 10, 23 rows to 10 centimetres. I'm getting about eight and a half centimetres. So my row tension is way out. Let me just make sure. I've double checked this already, but I'll just double check again. Um, yes, it's definitely 24 rows. So what I'm going to do, I've had a quick look through the pattern and it's, um, you cast on so many stitches and etc. So I'm not going to worry about row tension because it does say to need X number of um, centimetres, not X number of rows. So I'm not going to worry too much about row tension at the moment. We'll just be happy I got stitch tension. Um, but what I'm worried about is that I may need this yarn. So what I might actually do, because I haven't cast off, is I'm going to take out these markers and I'm going to unravel this yarn before I cast on um, because I'm worried I might need it so check my tension I will also as I'm knitting um, check the width of the piece you knit the base first I think and then you pick up stitches around the base and knit the walls of the bag if you like um, so we'll just take this marker out and then we'll unravel this knitting and then I will cast on. I'm in my office. I'm editing a video. Simon's just started cutting the grass. So if you hear a lawnmower in the background, that's it. Um, he's doing the back garden because um, I wanted to sit outside today because the weather's nice. I don't actually know how warm it is, but the weather is nice. So I wanted to sit outside and he promised me, he had some errands to do this morning and then he promised me he would cut the grass and then put the garden furniture out um, and he came home and then um, we had a phone call so we've been on the phone for a while and he was going to put off putting the grass and I was like but I want to sit in the garden whereas he promised me you get the garden furniture so he's cutting the grass in the back garden so he can get the garden furniture out and I also want to edit a video today so I thought if I come upstairs and edit this video while he um, cuts the grass then when he's finished cutting the grass I can go and sit in the garden in it if I make him cut the grass and then I'm not ready to go and sit outside or I go outside for half an hour and then I come back in and start editing a video then he might be thinking well why did I rush cutting the grass because she's not here so that's what I'm going to do unravel this edit this video cast on so I'm sitting out in the garden I hope it's not too noisy this I've got my head Earbud in because I think that maybe makes it sound a bit better. I'm not sure, but there are birds tweeting, and my husband is cutting the grass. He's cutting the grass the other side of the house, so hopefully, it's not too noisy. He was just cutting it just 
feel so the fence behind me. We have like a strip of grass that goes up along the road. Um, I'm not sure this technically our property because it's outside our fence, but we have to cut it. So I finished the base of this bag. Now it is measuring, let me just double check, but it is measuring 19 centimeters wide and it should be 20. So it's just measuring a smidgen of a 19 centimeters wide and it should be 20. And that worries me slightly because I have the lining already sewn. So we'll see um, whether that's going to be a problem or not. I might go and get the lining and see. I don't really want to knit it again. Um, I can't say I'm loving knitting with this yarn, um, this kind of boucle yarn. Um, also, holding this double and three and a half millimeter needle is quite. I don't know, it just feels quite tight, I don't know. Uh, using my Licky needles, by the way. They're pronounced Licky, not Likey. Because um, it's a Norwegian word. And then, uh, to get 12 centimeters, I have done 34 rows. So I think if I knitted it to the correct tension, row tension, it should have been 28 rows. Um, and I think I'm just like a smidgen over 12 centimeters, so that'll be fine. So now, I think I'm going to pick up stitches all the way around here and then um, go on to the um, sides of this bag. So it is Sunday today. It is uh, I was going to say Sunday morning. It's actually nearly midday. I've already been doing a bit of knitting this morning. I did a couple of rows downstairs while I was having breakfast, and then now I've been editing a video. So I've been doing a couple of rows while I've been editing a video. So I put that marker in this morning when I got up and picked up my knitting. So that's what I've done this morning. I think it's about five, four or five rounds. Um, so the bag is starting to take shape. I kind of wish I'd made more progress last night, I don't know why, but I felt yesterday I was making slow progress once I got on to the picking up the stitches around the base. Um, it just felt like it was really slow after that. So one thing I'm slightly worried about is that the base, my base is slightly smaller than it's supposed to be. So I think it measured, it's supposed to measure 20 centimeters. I think it was like just over 19, but I didn't want to re-knit it. I could have picked up more stitches but I didn't. So I've got the, if I was making my own lining I could adjust the lining but I have the lining already made. So I thought I would just try and put it inside and yeah I think the lining is just slightly big for the base but I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be all right. Okay so that's reassured me a bit because I was a bit worried that it was going to be too small. So I'm going to do a few more minutes of knitting while I edit this video um, and then we're going to go out and walk the dog um, and then I'll probably come back, finish editing this video and then sit and knit in the garden for the rest of the afternoon hopefully because it's another sunny day here in Cornwall. <music>
Good morning. It is Monday and it's the last day of the bank holiday. Um, we've had a little bit of a setback when it comes to this um, bag I'm making. <sighs> so yesterday I sat out in the garden most of the afternoon. I knitted on it in the evening. I didn't knit a lot on it because I did my nails. So I had to dry and stuff. Um, so I was scrubbing on my phone and things like that instead. Um, so I didn't knit a lot last night, but I got all this done so i went probably yesterday from about there to here so that was good and then last night i didn't sleep very well so i got up in the middle of the night for an, an hour and a half and i picked this up and i carried on knitting and um in my head i had it in my head that i had to knit 20 centimeters and then i looked at the pattern just before i went back to bed this morning <laughs> about three in the morning three thirty um i managed to go back to sleep i was dozing off and then we'd opened the window last night because it was quite warm we went to bed and it window picked up so it was like rattling so i got up and shut that and then got back to sleep and then i forgot that today is monday and normally my alarm is set to go off monday to friday at 10 to 6. so my alarm went off so the first, i got four alarms set i think um so i switched the first one off and then <laughs> grabbed my phone and switched the other ones off as well if I remember, I go in the night before and switch it off for the next, you can switch it off for like one day and then it automatically goes on the next day and stuff. So that's what I normally do, but I didn't. So I was knitting along at this, picked up the pattern and thought I was going to do 20 centimeters. I mean, I looked at the pattern several times yesterday to double check this and it says uh, 14 centimeters. So I got about 18 centimeters when this happened. So that wasn't good. Um, now my base is slightly smaller because it's supposed to be 20 centimeters wide and mine's only 19. So the base is slightly narrower. So I've unpicked a few rounds. I'm back to where I was. Basically, I unpicked where I knitted last night. Um, I think I'm going to pick one more round. Or am I? No. No, I started. Am I still unpicking? Yes, I'm still unpicking. No, I'm knitting again, sorry, because I'm knitting back and forth now. I was like, why am I going like the wrong way? Uh, so I thought I was still unpicking. Now I'm knitting, um, the rest is knitted back and forth. So you basically, when you get to this point, you divide the bag in half and you knit one side for a couple of centimetres and the other side for a couple of centimetres. And this is the bit that falls over the frame. So what I did this morning before I worked out was I came in here, I grabbed the lining. I put it inside the bag and it's a bit difficult because the lining is quite thin so it's a bit difficult to tell so I basically put it inside the bag and it does kind of come up to the edge so even though the bag is still slightly taller than it's supposed to be oh and I've just done the same thing I did last night I've dropped a few stitches pulled my needle out I did that last night I did about six stitches and because you really can't see your stitches they're a pain to pick up normally that wouldn't bother me unless it was brioche um but it's a pain to pick them up so i'm just going to make sure i've got them because you can't really see the stitches even the bits of that's on your needle with all these like loopy bits it's a bit annoying Another thing I did was when I started ripping last night, I'd only had a tiny bit left of each ball because I'm using two balls of yarn. So I unraveled the ball I had to the end and I wound them into one ball. So when I picked, I could just wind it all into one ball um, like that because I thought that'd be easier. And I had a dark grey and a light grey and the light grey had that much more on the ball than the dark grey. So that was interesting. Um, balls are always then they're not guaranteed to be exactly the same meterage uh, i guess they're done by weight but um you know there's always a slight variation so yeah there's that much variation so i thought i'd keep that because that might be useful for sewing up don't know whether i'll use this yarn to sew up or whether i'll use a different uh smoothie yarn i don't know so let's just measure it and see how many centimeters i have done so i'm going to do it on my lap where's my marker okay there's my marker so i'm just going to do it on my lap quickly um Measured it this morning. I think it was about 16 centimeters, 15, 16 centimeters, but let's just do it again. So, oh, 
Okay, this looks like it's like... Okay, I do find this a bit difficult to measure, but um, I think it's about 16 centimeters. So, which is fine. Yeah, about 16 centimeters. So it's a couple of centimeters taller than it's supposed to be. Obviously, if I was making my own lining, I could just... I would have just split very whilst this morning and carried on and I would have just made the lining slightly taller but because I have the lining already stitched and I don't really want to make the lining the pattern does include instructions for making the lining but I'm not great at sewing I mean I can sew basic but um if I if I've already bought the lining why would I um make it so I'm gonna go downstairs and I've just showered and gotten dressed for the day it's um mid-morning 11 o'clock i worked out this morning i had a little bit of a lion that's my alarm went off i went back to sleep and i woke up about i guess about eight o'clock uh simon got up and he said why don't you try and have a bit of a lion but i need to get up and take my painkillers i normally take them i do i'm taking some that you're supposed to take every 12 hours they're like slow release ones and i'm supposed to take them at um i normally take them at six o'clock so six in the morning six in the evening so if i took them at six last night then eight o'clock i'm like two hours late and if i take them too late then it mucks it up in the evening so i i just couldn't i tried to get back to sleep i just couldn't so i got up and had breakfast worked out i was a little bit warm from my workout it takes me a while to cool down so i'm gonna go downstairs get a snack and then go and sit in the garden put some sun cream on go and sit in the garden and finish this knitting i mentioned in the first video that i did have to do some swatching for this one's submission. I have not done that. Uh, we're going out this afternoon. We're going to my father-in-law's for a barbecue because the weather is so nice. And um, so I'm going to do. So I'm going to try and finish this before we go, and then I'm going to try and chart out what I want to do for this design submission. I start at least one swatch, and then I can work on that while we're um, at his house. Um, because Simon will be doing the barbecue <laughs> and my father-in-law will be helping out so I can probably just sit there in the sunshine and um, do a bit of knitting hopefully so that's the plan and then I, my plan had been to do it yesterday and I was sitting in the garden enjoying the sunshine um, I've been trying to see if I can read on my Kindle and knit which I didn't think I could do but I did and I did that all yesterday afternoon and I kept thinking I should get on and do this uh, design submission but it would mean lace knitting and then I thought then I can't read so I just put it off I really should be emailing it off today um but I hope I'll be able to email it off tomorrow and hopefully that'll be fine so I don't have a deadline for it they've this young company has asked me if I can design something for them and they emailed me like a couple of days before I was on holiday so I said I'm about to go on holiday I can't do it before I go but I will get back to you when I get back um so yeah I'm a couple of days behind but Hopefully it'll be okay. So now I'm going to go and sit in the garden. I finished it. Shouldn't take me long. An hour maybe. I don't know. Shouldn't take that long, but that's what I'm doing. The bag is finished so i finished all the knitting um the last bit was to knit these two flaps which are not going to fold over so that's what i'm going to do next so i've come inside so i can actually film it and i just say that i should tighten the springs up so i guess that's these bits i'm not sure how to tighten those up and i should also oil it i don't have anything to oil it with so I'm going to so use sewing machine oil or WD-40, I don't have either. So I'm going to risk not oiling it. I think it may need oiling from time to time anyway. And then let's have a look at the instructions. Um, oh, I need to weave in the end, so let's just do that quickly. I am sitting with my kind of hand uh, around the 
camera so uh, tripod so that makes it a little bit more difficult i think if i'd had like the um thing in my the knitting in my lap i may, may have been easier and it's supposed to be using small whip stitches i think i don't know what whip stitches are really i'm not great at like different types of stitches <laughs> i use mattress stitch and that's about it so I think I do have to like pin this down, but I don't. Um, hang on, I'm just going to get my uh, rocking pins. I think what I'm going to do is find the center of this thing. center approximately of the of that that's where I started um, knitting the edging the where the yarn split and then I'm going to take this over because this is gonna to have to be like gathered up a bit if you know what I mean There is no mention in the pattern of a tutorial or anything, any like video, any photos. I don't know whether there are more photos on Ravelry. I haven't looked. Okay, so that's wrong, isn't it? Because that bit's supposed to be here. <laughs> okay, so. Let's take these out again. I think I got the gist there, and I think pinning it down is definitely an easy way to doing to do to do this. So let's let's just pull this out and let's try it this way. I might pin both sides down actually before I start sewing. So I think what I'm going to do is pin this side down and then do the other side. Oh yeah, now I see why the edges go all the way around. Well, it's not just the middle bit, if you know what I mean, because obviously it's got to come all the way over here. I'm just kind of mumbling while I'm doing this, so if what I say doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. This is not meant to be a tutorial. This is just a vlog of me making this item, so don't take this as a, <laughs> as a tutorial or anything, because it's not my pattern, so it's not my job to make a tutorial for it but I don't knit other people's patterns very often so I thought it'd be fun to just do a little vlog of my experience of knitting this pattern okay so I think that looks all right and I think I'm going to pin this bit as well um, before I start sewing because I don't want to have to sew this more than once okay so it kind of like doesn't quite meet them, but almost. There we go, and a couple more. I guess one thing you have to be careful about is so you pull over the same amount. Now, yeah, I was supposed to knit two centimeters. I did six rows. I mean, I measured it. It was actually three centimeters. So I was like, fine, I don't care at this point. There we go. Okay, so at least it does close. I think I have to be careful here not to get it right into the like, closing mechanism. So I need to so I'm just pulling this 
um, edge over just enough to kind of cover the frame. So I think that's better. There we go. I think that's better. Right, let's sew that one down and see. Now, I probably have way too long a tail here, but no, there were slips. Uh, what's it called? Whip stitches. I don't really know what whip stitches are. But what I'm going to do, I don't really have to worry about it showing on the front because this yarn, nothing's going to show, so that's fine. mission accomplished so it is 20 past three on monday the end of the bank holiday weekend and i finished a bag i am thinking maybe i should have made an effort to find something to oil this thing because it is squeaking slightly i may have to have a look and see if i do have any sewing machine oil um but i think i can do that because i can still access the kind of hinges here so um First, let's show you the inside. The stitching in of the um, lining is not perfect. Uh, my needle wasn't very sharp and I have done a pretty shoddy job of it. This yarn is awful to sew up with, by the way. It's okay sewing the um, what's it called? frame around it, um, but I didn't enjoy sewing in the lining with it, so that was probably a mistake. So the pattern recommended a different yarn that I couldn't get hold of. So I used drops of Paca Boucle um, and I used two strands held together because this is about half the thickness of the yarn. I still didn't quite get the tension right. I couldn't be bothered to um, play with different needles. I just thought this is a bag. It's close enough. The lining is a little bit big. There were a few places around here where I had to kind of like gather it up a little bit. Um, but that's probably just my tension that wasn't spot on. So yeah, I like it. Um, what I don't like is here. It's if I open it and I kind of push it out like that, both sides, and then shut it, then it's fine. But if I open it and I don't do that, then it's not. So let me show you the picture. So this is what came with the frame. I think that's the large version i'm not knitting the large version in this yarn um i may knit something to go with the large frame because i've got the frame and i got the lining i may do something completely different um i may actually make up my own pattern who knows but i'm not knitting with this yarn again i like the texture of this yarn i love the way it looks it's called the teddy clutch it's definitely got sort of like a teddy look to it i guess um i don't want to knit with this yarn again in a hurry so i put those two balls of yarn in here just to fill it out um yeah that makes that look a bit better i don't know what i'm going to use this for clutch i don't really like clutch bags um i have got some where are they here i bought these just before i went on holiday um for a handbag i got and i haven't used them yet but i may be able to use these um one of the other bags that Petite Knits does, the Winter Clutch, I think it is, she has a chain that she attaches as a handle. And she sells that on the website, and the chain comes with little, like, loops, hoops, things, like tiny versions of these, like tenth probably, um, that you sew to the bag, and then you can attach a handle to it. I ordered these for Private on Holiday, and I'm wondering whether I can attach these hmm, yeah no 
I was wondering whether I could just like put this through the fabric. I could stitch them though. I could probably stitch them. They're a little bit big possibly. And then I could attach handles or like a strap. Um, I may, my parents are coming to visit soon, so I may actually uh, order one of those um, or a couple of those chains with the loops, hoops, things from Petite Knit website, get it sent to my parents and then get them to bring it with them when they come over because um, then I have that option in the future. But if not, there we go. Very happy with it. I enjoyed the pattern. So let me just let you know what I thought about the pattern. So I don't knit other people's patterns very often. I'm just going to take this out while I think about it. I don't knit other people's patterns very often um, because I obviously design my own. And I can't remember the last time I knitted somebody else's pattern, to be quite honest. So it was interesting following somebody else's pattern. Obviously, this is a very simple pattern. It's not difficult at all. Um, my difficult was putting the frame in and the lining really that was a difficult bit for me the pattern is very it's four pages um, diagrams for how to do the lining obviously I haven't tested those because I haven't done the lining I bought it it's a fairly basic pattern you knit the bottom you pick up stitches you knit the sides and then the difficult bit comes to put it all together really that's the most difficult bit it comes in quite a few different languages so if you are not English speaking then check out if it's available in your language. You can go to the Petite Knit website, which I assume is just petiteknit.com, but I'll link that below. Hang on, petiteknit.com. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with it. I enjoyed making it, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It's a little bit different, me knitting somebody else's pattern. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We did recently get to uh, 2,000 subscribers. And my last podcast episode, which was episode 75, uh, which was my Knitting in Spain blog, I do have a prize draw for celebrating that I got to 2,000 subscribers while I was on holiday. So if you, if you haven't watched that episode yet, do go and uh, watch it and make sure you enter the prize draw. Last week I also posted a video on uh, my latest design for Knitting Magazine, uh, which is in the shops in the UK now. Um, I posted a video where I talk about the design in detail. Let me just find it quickly to show you. There you go. That design. So um, if you haven't watched that, do go watch that. I'll make sure I link both below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.